I am just interrupting the start of this video to just apologise in advance. The first part of this video where I'm looking at the exterior of the Amira, the audio didn't work on the camera for some reason. So I've had to resort to doing a voiceover because Lotus are just about to pick this car up and the weather has been terrible so I wasn't able to reshoot it. So bear with me and apologies, but thanks for watching. Let's uh, get on with the rest of the video. Hello and welcome to another Spectrum Geeks video. My name is Dale and in today's video we're checking out this. It's the Lotus Emira. So in this video we're going to look at basically three different things. The exterior, the interior and obviously how does it drive and perform. Now one thing to be upfront about is I'm reviewing this as an existing Lotus Evora 400 owner. So my opinion is obviously slightly biased, but I'm having a kind of a natural comparison to the Evora 400 to this Amira. Now, one of the first things that I think most people will have to agree with, the Amira does look absolutely stunning externally. I think they've done a fantastic styling job. I know it's been mentioned in the press, but it does kind of look more like a supercar than a sports car, but for sports car pricing. So absolutely splendid now um, if we look at some of the kind of characteristics uh, or specifications i should say uh, between the emira and the 400 so basically this particular model is the same as the Evora 400 so it is the three and a half liter v6 toyota lump so 400 horsepower at around 7k rpm 410 newton meters of torque um, but uh, 3,500 revs for the Evora 400. Apparently this is slightly increased to 430 Newton meters on the Amira and the Evora 400 has a 0 to 60 of 4.1 seconds compared to a slightly slower 4.2 0 to 60 of the Amira. Now that's probably down to um, weight a little bit. So the Evora 400 weighs 1,415 kilograms while the Emira is a little bit heavier at 1,458 kilograms. Also, in terms of the externals, the size is a little bit different as well. So the Emira is slightly longer than the Evora 400. So the Evora 400 is 4,394 centimeters, whereas the Emira is 4,412 uh, centimeters long and in terms of the width, the Evora 400 actually is slightly wider. So for, uh, 1,972 wide compared to a slightly smaller 1,895 on the Amira. And then finally, in terms of height, the Evora 400 is actually a little bit lower. So 1,223 height and the Amira is slightly higher at 1,225. And then finally, if we look at the cargo space, the Amira actually has slightly more room, 160 litres of cargo space compared to the 151 litres of cargo space on the Amira. Now, again, if we look at the exterior of the Amira, again, lots of aero, aero kind of on the front bumper, aero on the bonnet, all things channeling aero in, up and around the car. I'll see the nice side scoops at the back as well. And again, I still just can't get over just how beautiful the Amira looks, it really is a fantastic car. Another thing that I like about it from an external perspective is really nice, big visibility on the windscreen there. And also compared to the Evora that only has a single wiper, it's nice to see that this car actually has two wipers. So again, not a sexy or cool thing, but very, very practical in the fact that we have better visibility with the Amira in the rain and because it is British winter time now um, I definitely experienced some winter driving with the Amira. So we look at things from the other angle and from the rear so again really nice body lines 
Um, I'm not a massive fan of the door handles, how they've done kind of, it's more aero, so they kind of sit in, but it means you have to kind of push the button in to kind of get it open, which can be a little bit tricky if it's kind of cold or frozen. In the Avora 400, to open up the fuel cap, you have to press a button inside to pop the fuel cap up, but here on the mirror, you can just lift it up and it doesn't seem to be locked in place. So again, I don't know, it just seems a little bit strange to me that that's not locked down. In terms of the back, again, more aero, more air getting into the engine bay, and again, a nice sculpted rear end. I really do love the look of the mirror from all of the angles, really. They've done a fantastic job. With the tailpipes, again, that hocks back a little bit more to the Elise, in my opinion. So I had a Series 2 Elise many years ago that had the twin exhaust set up very much like the Amira has here. Me personally, again, it's just a personal preference, I prefer the exhaust setup that they have on the Exiges and the Avoras. But um, yeah, however you look at it, absolutely beautiful looking car. So here we are inside the Lotus Amira and it is a really nice place to be. The seats I find to be really comfortable. The Evora seats are comfortable as well, but these are nicely kind of laid out, well positioned and provide good support. As mentioned, there is absolutely no room for anyone to sit in the back. There's no seats there at all. It is just some storage with a little storage net in there. You can get probably a couple of carry-on uh, bag size things in there. Everything else is really good. Um, this particular car has the KEF audio system. It sounds pretty good um, for the type of car it is. It's not an amazing sound system, but it is better than the sound system that I have in my Avora 400. On the doors, again, you have uh, the controls for the windows and the mirrors. A couple of nice things in the car though, in terms of USB connectivity. Up here behind the rear view mirror is a very small uh, USB-A slot. So again, if you had a dash cam or something, there's already something that you can connect into there. Down the bottom here, there is a, a slot where you can put your phone, then because this has wireless uh, Android, auto and CarPlay. It's not a charging space for your phone just there. Actually, the, the dock actually is, is quite small and I often, uh, in the week that I've had the car, often tapped, tapped the demisters by accident. But just behind there, where the, the visible gear linkage is, is another USB slot. So again, if you do need to charge your phone, there's the option for USB slot just there. And then at the back here is an armrest where if you pop that up, obviously you've got additional storage and there is a USB-C and a usb a slot there as well again for additional charging uh, as well as connecting your usb devices that you can then play your um, media content from the usb port here uh, on the media center talking about the media center bit of a fingerprint magnet like any touchscreen uh, device but relatively intuitive there are a few things that i don't like i don't like that when you kind of the home screen is Kind of this system where you've got the temperature the tire pressures and everything you can't really customize that too much um you do have physical buttons for the uh, air conditioning controls um playing pausing of the media and obviously those driving modes and also for the heating system as well quite nice you got a little picture of the the guy with the helmet on but if you want to control heated seats or anything again that's something you have to control from the touch screen so again a couple of taps to get the heated seats uh, and stuff to work again not show stoppers um but you know i wish wish there was tactile buttons there They're, you could move things around a little bit um i think to be able to get options for heated seats and have to be through touch screen um everything else um on the right hand side we've got access to the electronic parking brake um, the little switch so we can change the brightness of the display and the button to pop the boot open. The center console is very well um, displayed. You've basically got the two sections on the left, information about the car itself, and on the right, kind of what um, mode you're in, tour, sport, or track, and the gear, rev limiter and everything on the front. A little center console, you can change that to kind of show nav, tire pressures, whatever, you can control that on the steering wheel. Again, and on the left-hand side, cruise control and everything is controlled on there. So again, relatively intuitive. All the information you need is on there. Uh, again, it's just a really nice kind of plush setup. It, it feels like a more premium car inside than the Aurora did. 
I'm not quite sure what they've done with the kind of design and the sizing. As I mentioned, there's definitely no way they can make this into a two plus two with the current setup. I don't feel like you've got more space here in the cabin, but I do feel like the dash is longer. So maybe they've moved the dash back and the seats back, which is what's kind of created this situation where, you know, it's not possible to have it as a two plus two. Up here in the roof area and on the bottom of the mirror, you've got um, the three buttons to have to control your garage, electric gates, that kind of thing. Um, I can't remember what it's called, home home something. I had it on my um, previous Evora as well. And then up in the roof lining area, we've got an SOS button and then the buttons to control the cabin lights in here. But yeah, really nice plush place to be. In the boot, again, we have some storage in there. You can fit golf clubs or whatever it is, or you know, a big holder. Slightly less storage in the boot than on the Evora. Again, not sure if they've switched things around a little bit. I think, again, it's more plush in the back so perhaps the thicker um linings and some sound deadening has reduced the storage space um a little bit yeah but yes very nice car to be in it feels very premium compared to the evora but uh, the only thing i don't like about the inside is again it you we'll see when we drive um you can't hear the exhaust note as well as you could on the evora i think they've done something with the exhaust and sound deadening you can hear supercharger a lot more um but it's a little bit more quieter so again probably better if you're using it every single day but not if you're going for a weekend blast you probably lose that sense of adventure a little bit but let's go for a drive and then we can finish up this video of my thoughts of the lotus amira first edition so looks and styling are all good and well but what is a Lotus Emira like to drive? Well, start off on the positive. It drives and feels like a Lotus. I'm not sure if this is the sports or the tour suspension setup. I'm thinking the sports because it does feel a slightly firmer ride than my Evora 400. But no, it's, um, it's really nice. Not sure how well you can hear uh, in terms of the engine note. I think there is some more sound deadening or perhaps the exhaust setup. It's probably slightly different in this than the Evora 400, probably to meet uh, Euro regs or something. But you can actually hear more of the supercharger whine than you can hear um, the exhaust in this vehicle. Whereas compared to the 400, um, yeah, it's definitely more supercharger, less exhausty. Just for reference, I've got this in the sports exhaust mode, uh, as we mentioned earlier. It's kind of the sweet spot in terms of sound and the handling. We've still got some of the controls in this wet, soggy area. So driving it is a really nice place to be. Obviously, there's absolutely no room in the back, which is a negative. My kids have already mentioned that they love the look of it, but it's a shame that there's no rear seats, so they can't all come out. Uh, at the same time but the cockpit actually feels a little bit more enclosed than the Evora to me um, but as we kind of discovered before the interior is very plush the steering wheel is very nice um, to hold and to use the dials are illuminated which is um, good for nighttime use cruise control that all works really well as well it's not adjustable cruise control though so you know, when you get closer to traffic got to rely uh, on your manual controls but everything else is really good nice positioning of the steering wheel it took a little bit of a while to get the um, seats positioned exactly how I wanted it with the electronic controls but again that just took a little bit of a healing but again not a problem Whistle. 
I'll go back to the sport mode. I think it sounds a little bit better. But the handling, as I mentioned already with all Lotuses, it hasn't lost that whatsoever. It's definitely very comfortable. And I actually think, and I did, this isn't a negative, but kind of linked to this original question of this video, is the Amira better than the Evora? I think it depends what you're looking for. I think this is a better everyday car. Is it a car for the drivers? Yes. Is it something that if you use your Evora just at the weekends and for special occasions, the Amira is worth changing it for? In my opinion, not. But if you're looking for a, a sports car that you can use every day, that is comfortable, is plush, is smooth, then this is definitely it. There is still a little bit of um, gearbox rattle that you hear. Uh, it's definitely dulled down compared to on the Evora, but you can tell it obviously shares the same characteristics. Which again, none of these are bad things, just things to note. Again, a lot of technology in the car, um, like with the dash obviously being electronic and everything. There's no um, blind spot indicator, which I thought there might be uh, on this car since it's got all the other electronic bells and whistles, but um, that's not there. But the visibility is better, in my opinion, on these wing mirrors, on these side mirrors, than on the overall. They're positioned out a little bit further, which I think is good. It's very comfortable and again rear visibility is slightly better I think in this car than on the Evora. It feels like the, the rear windscreen is slightly larger which obviously gives you better visibility at the back. As you showed earlier the dash is pleasant. I think it looks more futuristic -y that uh, it's obviously all electronic. Personally a sucker for the dials. Would have been nice if there was an option to have um, electronic dials instead of just the digital readout. I think it seems like a bit of a waste to have the whole right hand side just to show you what gear you're in. Uh, but you can change uh, the information on the centre screen to show nav options, tyre pressures, that kind of thing. A couple of things I'm not a big fan of um, when we're driving though is that some of the things are still limited to be ready to see on the dash. So it is good that there's obviously physical buttons for the driver modes, for the air conditioning, heating, so for the media play and pause, but things like heated seats, changing the radios, all that kind of thing is hidden in the infotainment system, which is relatively intuitive, but there's still a few things, again, over the week I've had this car, I still can't work out how to make it do the DAB radio, only FM radio, which isn't very good reception wise. That's a common issue I see with the fiberglass um, body of the car. It's difficult. But uh, everything else, again, it is a nice car, very comfortable, very responsive, and enjoyable. And again, obviously, being a supercharged 3.5 litre V6, there's no real turbo lag. Um, the supercharger does spool up very quickly. And obviously, as you're Progressing and the engine is warming up, it does kind of change on that big top screen where the rev limiter is. So, just for example, sat here currently in six, two, just over 2,000 revs. Put my foot to the floor, you can hear the supercharger whine. Very pleasant. Again, if I drop it down a little bit. Definitely a quieter, less exhort note interior experience, which again was why I think it makes it better as a daily driver. But personally, I would prefer some other options. And there's probably some options to do, uh, there's probably got three cats or something. So you can probably change one of those for a straight through and still pass the MOT and get a bit of a better exhaust note from inside. But yeah, definitely very comfortable. I still think though that it may have been a mistake um, to not make this a 2 plus 2 um, like the Evora because I think the majority of the Evoras were sold with those rear seats but again very comfortable 
nice handling characteristics. Obviously when you change those sports modes from tour, sport and track, it's not changing the suspension settings, it's changing the handling, um, you know, steering wheel uh, speed a little bit, uh, throttle response and you know, dumbing down some of those uh, electronic stability controls and throttle response, that kind of thing. But ride height, suspension dynamics, that all stays all exactly the same. done a really good job again I just just to wrap up this video some of the purists probably are not a massive fan of the Amira in terms of you know a little bit extra weight not as raw um, as, as a typical Lotus I would say actually the Amira when I had uh, my Exige S and moved to the Avora I'll say the Avora was more plush quieter etc and I think again it's a similar transition to the Amira. It makes the Evora a rawer car than it may have seemed compared to an Exige. But I think this is a good kind of way to kind of end the internal combustion engine for Lotus as it moves to its fully electric vehicle kind of stance. And again, may not be 100% as pure as some of the other Lotuses, but I think this is what Lotus needs. And if you are a purist and perhaps you're not a massive fan, I hope that this car continues to sell really well. I think it's a great competitor. Uh, it's a similar price to uh, Cayman, I think it is. Um, so again, you're probably not going to compare this um, to a 911. Like I think you could with the Evora with the 2 plus 2. Now, obviously, this has just been two seats. I don't think it's um, comparable to a 911 uh, buyer anymore. But again, Cayman, styling, build quality is really good. Um, I think it makes Lotus a serious competitor in this sports car mark. And again, hopefully it's going to make the company successful for the future. And if you like Lotus, you want it to stay around for a while. And this is what the company needs to do. So yeah, glad that I finally got to drive the mirror. Thanks very much to Lotus for letting me have this for a week. It's been an absolutely splendid experience. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or feedback, please leave them down in the comment section. Consider subscribing if you haven't done already. If you like this kind of content, cars, flying, gadgets, geekery, solar, batteries, all sorts of stuff on the channel. Also consider supporting it more directly, becoming a Spectrum Geeks member as well. If you like, 99 pence a month, you can cancel whenever you like. 
But that's it for me. Until next time, take care of yourself. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.